So I brought my friend with me, Mary Beth, and I kind of stole you guys off your field trip today. You guys are kind of lucky. Mary Beth and I have been going around to schools all week this week talking about a very important case that she was a part of. Mary Beth Tinker and her brothers decided to stand up against the rules at school and got suspended. They got in big trouble. And it was, they did it kind of on purpose, but then they ended up going to the courts and the thing that they got established for kids was their First Amendment rights at school. You guys are third graders, but can anybody tell me one of the rights of the First Amendment? Oh, that's hard. It's a hard question. Do you guys know? That's hard. What, is the First Amendment connected to the Constitution? Yes. Yeah. So I'll let Mary teach you guys about the, uh, the First Amendment and the rights that are in it. But Mary Beth Tinker and her brothers and some of their friends were involved in a very important case called Tinker versus Des Moines, and it happened right here in Iowa. They were little kids just like you guys growing up here. It's a pretty awesome story. So I'll hand it over to Mary Thanks, Beth. Thanks, Elizabeth. Let her talk to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow, isn't this place great? Do you like it? Herbert Hoover? What'd you like about it? Front row seats. Front row seats are really cool. And then you can like put your feet up and it's so comfy and everything. Wow. And Herbert Hoover, well, he was a president, right? of the United States, and we're having an election going on kind of now for president, right? You know what Herbert Hoover also was? He was really interesting. He loved peace, and you know how people have different religions? You know about that, right? And in our country, we say that's good, that's okay, that's a good thing, right? Because everybody can be different, and that's good for everybody to be themselves, right? And so, and some people even have no religion. Did you know that? Yeah, some people have no religion, right? And that's okay too, right? Okay, so Herbert Hoover, his religion was called Quaker. Did you ever hear of Quakers? You did? Really? They're like, what, their whole thing is about peace and love. They believe in love and peace, right? Herbert Hoover was so cool. And so I am going around the country because I think the kids are really good at love. Did you think so too? Yeah, you guys like, you know, you know about love. Sometimes adults like to fight a whole lot. Did you ever notice that? That's not right. They should be kind and loving, right? And so Herbert Hoover was, you know, he thought people should be kind. So I'm traveling around. Oh, yeah, do you like my bus? Yeah, that's what I'm traveling around and and talking to kids and teachers about how kids have great ideas. Did you guys ever have great ideas? Yeah. And do you think people should listen to your ideas? Yeah. But sometimes, did you ever hear people say, well, kids, you don't know anything. So let us make all the decisions and stuff, right? But kids actually do know things. Sometimes kids can solve problems better than adults. Did you know that? Like, they did this study. They gave the kids a box of tacks and a candle. And they gave the adults a box of tacks and a candle. And they wanted to see who could figure out how to tack it to the wall. That's kind of hard to do. Guess who figured it out? The kids. Yeah, because kids, there's one thing about kids. You don't necessarily already have an idea about you know how tax and candles go together you might have a new idea that's what's so great about kids you have new ideas it's like a girl told me recently she was in seventh grade and she said well you know what we're fresher <laughs> yeah kids are fresher you think so so you have new ideas you have fresher ideas and that's really really important in our country and in our world because we need new ideas to make the world more peaceful wow so that's what we're traveling around about um Oh, wait a second. Oh, that was me and my sister. Oh, that's Hope, my little sister, and me. She was baking me a birthday cake, and we were living in Des Moines, Iowa. Yeah, you know Des Moines? Yeah, ever been there? Yeah, that's where we lived. Yep. And, oh, I forgot to show you my dad. Oh, wow. One time we were watching TV, and we saw some kids who they had a good idea that was better than some adults. Back then, some kids who were black, 
kids could not go into the store. They would not let them. Did you know that? They would not let black kids swim in the swimming pool some places, like where we had lived in Atlantic, Iowa. The black kids couldn't even swim at the pool. Did you know this? Yeah. What do you think about that? Boo. Boo. What? Unfair. unfair. That's unfair. See, that's what kids are so good at, noticing something that's unfair, right? You ever see something that's unfair? And sometimes people will say, well, life's not fair. Get used to it, right? But I'm here to tell you, don't get used to it. Life should be fair. And that's what Herbert Hoover thought, too. And he thought life should be fair. OK, so anyway, um, there were these kids in Birmingham, Alabama. And their schools weren't as nice. They were black. See these kids? Yeah, and they were black kids and their school wasn't as nice and sometimes it leaked and their books weren't as good and, and they couldn't go into the store to try on clothes and things because they were like, oh no, no black kids in school and no black kids can go into the store because they have cooties and things and we don't want black kids in here. That's not nice, right? And you know what else? It's not democracy. It's not right and it's not democracy. <sighs> So the black kids, they had an idea that was even better because they were young and they were fresher and they had imagination. And they said, we could imagine a better way of doing things where everybody gets an equal chance and everybody has nice schools and everybody gets to go into the store, right? That sounds better, right? That's more, that's more loving and nice. So the kids got out and they went on a march and it was called the Birmingham Children's March. This would be a great school project. It's one of the famous, most famous marches in the history of the world. Yeah, when children decided to speak up and stand up for love, for equality, and they said, we are equal. That's not right. They were fresher. Oh, no, some people got really, really mad at them. Like, there was a bully there. And he was the chief of police. And he was really mean. And guess what his name was? You're not going to believe this. His real name was Bull. I'm not making this up. His real name was Bull. It's a perfect name for a bully, right? Oh, Bull Connor. He's like, we're going to get those kids. Those kids are not, they're not supposed to be doing that. They should be in school. And they should not be out here talking about equality and justice and fairness. They're just kids. They don't know anything. Bull said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put these dogs, we have these German Shepherd dogs, and let's put them on the kids. Wow. I couldn't believe, I was watching this on TV. I was just a kid. I was in Iowa, in Des Moines, Iowa, with my little sister Hope. We were watching these kids on TV, on the news. I thought, what do you think about Bull? How would you like that if you were out trying to do that and somebody named Bull put a dog on you. Are you guys scared of dogs? No. I am. I'm kind of scared of dogs. Wow, I thought those kids were really brave and really strong. And you know what? This march was so famous it went all over the world and people said, wow, kids are really good at standing up against hate. Kids love, want to have love and peace, and kids really understand what democracy is about because they understand these things, and they're fresher, and they have really good ideas, and we should listen to them. And then the police arrested some of them, the teenagers. 2,000 kids got put in outdoor jail that year by bull. They built barbed wire jails outside. It was so mean. I was in Des Moines, and I couldn't even believe it. But I knew I wasn't like those kids. You know why? Because I was scared of dogs. And I wanted to go roller skating. Yeah, I liked roller skating. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm too scared to do that. But I said, those kids are amazing. These kids, they helped democracy as much as George Washington did. They helped democracy as much as Thomas Jefferson, as much as Herbert Hoover. They, they were just kids, but they helped democracy too. Yes. Huh? Oh, you just like stretching your arm. Does anybody have any questions so far? Questions, comments?
or parents, teachers. Parents and teachers can talk too. It's okay. Oh, wow. I couldn't believe those kids. They were amazing. Then, oh, no. One day we were at a picnic. Oh, yeah, that's me in back with the braids. Oh, yeah. I was just about 10 years old. That's my dad. He was a preacher, Reverend Tinker. My sister, Bonnie, and some friends of ours. Oh, that's my brother, John, right there. There's Hope, Paul, my brother, some friends of ours, my brother, John. We were at a picnic, and we heard about some, some of Bull's friends, what they had done to the little kids. You know what they did? They bombed their church. They put a bomb in their church. That was really, really mean. Ay, ay, ay. I was so sad to hear that those little kids had been hurt. And so we were sad, and some people in Des Moines decided to have sort of like a funeral service for, because some of the little girls were even killed by the bully bull. And so they wore these armbands. This is called a black armband. People were so sad about the bully and how people were so proud of the little children. And so the people wore black armbands to say, what do you think this was meaning? What were they trying to say there, huh? What were, huh? What do you think people were trying to say when they wore those black arms? See that black armband? Just like this. And people were sad. This is to say you're sad. Sometimes if somebody you know gets hurt or dies, some people used to wear black armbands. Did you guys ever hear of this? Did you? Yeah, you've heard about it, right? That's what people did in Des Moines. We were so sad about it. So some people, we decided maybe we should do that. Maybe we should wear black armbands sometimes because we, we saw something also that made us sad too besides this. Sometimes, do you ever see the news and it ever makes you sad? Sometimes, yeah, we heard about war. Next, we started hearing about war. That was in a place called Vietnam. Have you ever heard of Vietnam? Yeah, you have. Did anybody you know go to Vietnam? Was in Vietnam? Yeah. Yeah, we started watching this on the news. Like, you know how you see about the news now? You see war now on TV or on the news? You know, it has war now, right? Iraq, did anybody go to Iraq, any of your family? Afghanistan? Yeah, we got really sad about war, and so we decided to, this was like 50 years ago. I was 13 years old when this happened. I felt sad, and some kids decided at the high school to wear black armbands again. They decided, well, we're sad too, just like those kids you know, in Birmingham and everything, so maybe we should wear black armbands to school to say that we're sad about war. Guess what the principal said? Huh? What? No, exactly. The principal's like, no, kids can't wear armbands to school to say that they're sad. Kids are supposed to, like, you know, be doing their math and science and stuff, right? And he said, no, you cannot wear armbands to school. So... Then we didn't know what to do, but uh, that was me. I, that was my mom and my dad, the preacher. And there, we said, but wait a second. We have, like, democracy, and you're supposed to have your own ideas. That's what democracy is. And even kids should be able to have their ideas and feel sad and say they're happy or sad or whatever they feel. Sometimes I feel happy. Sometimes I feel sad. Should you be able to say that? Yeah. And so we went to the school board, and I had my black armband on and tried to change their mind. And I tried to tell the principals, but wait a second, kids have ideas, kids have feelings too. We should be able to say our feelings too. And the principal said, well, you're going to get suspended if you do that. Wow, I didn't want to get suspended. But I felt like sometimes you have to say what you feel. And now I'm a nurse, and I work with kids, and I know kids have a lot of feelings. 
And then the principal gave me a suspension slip and said, you have to go home. You're in trouble, Mary Beth. You're not supposed to wear that black armband. Oh, no. I went home, and I got a suspension notice. And it said, Mary Beth has been suspended because she was wearing a black armband, and the Board of Education said that she wasn't supposed to do that. And that was at Warren Harding Junior High School in Des Moines, Iowa. Wow, I was really nervous and scared to take that suspension home. But I thought my mother might understand because, remember, by now, they were, well, I don't think I told you this, but besides being a preacher, my dad also got involved with the Quakers. And what are the Quakers all about? Peace, right? They like peace. So I thought maybe my parents will understand why I want peace, too. Yeah. So we went, I went home. I took my suspension paper home, and another boy got suspended. His name is Chris Eckhart. My brother got suspended. John. A few kids in Des Moines got suspended, and it was in all the newspapers, and it was really a big deal. I didn't know it was going to be such a big deal. I knew the Birmingham kids were really a big deal, but I didn't think this was going to be a big deal. And then I found out that it was. And that's my brother John. And we even put peace signs on our armbands like this. Oh, yeah, here's one we have on here, huh? Uh, so there was a group. Well, some people got really, really mad. They even threatened to um, hurt us. You know, because some people don't like it when you do things like this. And so they, they said, you kids should not be doing this. You should just follow the rules. And so we didn't know what to do. But one of the groups came and helped us. And they said, we don't think that's right. So they helped us. And, and they, their name was the American Civil Liberties Union. And they've been around for about 100 years. The American, there actually it was the Iowa Civil Liberties Union because you have your civil liberties. That means that everybody can think what they want to think in our country. That's your rights. And they're like, kids should have rights too. So they came and they helped us and they said, we're going to have to go to court. We're gonna, we can't change the school board's mind. We're going to have to go to the court and tell them that the school made a mistake. And so they took it to court. Sometimes if something is really, really wrong and you believe it's wrong, first you try to change the person's mind, which we try, but they wouldn't change their mind. So then sometimes you might have to go to court and let the judge figure out who's right. You guys ever seen, you know, judges in courts and things? You have? All right, so sometimes you know the judge figures things out, right? Sometimes the judge can help figure things out, but kids can help too, right? Maybe you helped too with your opinion about it. So the they said, the judge, you know, said, well, I don't know. The kids, yes, it's true that they should follow the rules. But the judge said, but on the other hand, wait, the kids should be able to say their feelings too. I mean, we have democracy. And that's what democracy is, that people can express themselves. So they argued back and forth and back and forth. And finally, it went all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is like the biggest court in the United States. It covers all the states. Have you guys ever heard of the Supreme Court? Yeah, it's really amazing. It's in Washington, D.C. And Herbert Hoover wasn't president then. Johnson was president a man named Lyndon Johnson, and he was in Washington, D.C., living in the White House, and the Supreme Court was right down the street. And we went over there, and the judges there argued and argued and argued, and finally the judges, guess what they decided? What? To switch the rules. The judges decided to switch the rules. They decided that, you know what? Actually, kids do have some good ideas. And actually, kids should have some rights to express their feelings and to express their ideas. Because otherwise, how's our country going to grow? And how are we going to listen to new good ideas? Because sometimes kids can solve problems even better than adults. And if we don't listen to kids, we're all going to be cheated. That's what the judges decided. So they made this ruling, and it became one of the most famous rulings. 
in the country, and it's even around the world people know about this case. It's called Tinker. The case is called Tinker versus Des Moines. And I'm Mary Beth Tinker, and my brother is John Tinker, and we were involved with this case, and that's why I'm here today, and that's why I've been traveling all over Iowa, Iowa City, and even all over the country, talking to kids about how you have good ideas and you should have your rights to express them, and that even the Supreme Court said that you should be able to express yourself. So thanks, everybody. It's good to be with all of you today. But I want to hear what you guys think about all this now. What do you think? If you could change one thing in the world, what would you change? Is there something you might change? Yeah. Teachers should get more money? All right. I kind of agree with you there because like, I mean, teachers should have, schools should have all the money that you need, right? Kids should have everything that you need. Kids are very, very, you know, wonderful, and their, your ideas are so important to help our world grow, right? Yeah? What else? The poor who work hard should get more money. I'm with you. I know. Why should, poor pe why should the poor work really, really hard? And some people even have two jobs, right? Do you know anybody who has two jobs? Yeah. Maybe some of your folks. Do you know anybody who has three jobs? Yeah. Now, wait a second. One job should be enough, right? But if you got paid more money, it probably would be, right? That's not fair. And how come some people are really, really, really rich? And some people are really, that's not, yes. Yes. They get paid more money. I know. That way you get paid more money, right? If you work. And then you can get the stuff that you need faster. I know. Oh, some people are trying to get people to be paid more. And a lot of the people that are trying to make that happen are kids. Like in Ohio, they started this whole project called Raise the Minimum Wage in their class. And they went out and talked to everybody at the grocery stores, and they talked to everybody at the swimming pool, and they talked to everybody on the street. And they said, we should raise the minimum wage. And guess what? They got the minimum wage raised. Yeah. That was a few years ago. Yeah, see, kids do have good ideas, right? Yeah, that's, what else would you like to change in the world? See, you can use your rights to express your feelings about something that you want to make better. Or what about in your school? Is there anything you'd like to make better in your school? What school do you guys go to? Center Point. Oh, Center Point. That's cool. And what else would you like to change? Either let's say like you could have a dream and you could change anything you want. And what would it be? Yes. What would you like to change? Huh? Yes. Yeah. Bigger lunches. I know. That is really a good idea. Woo Let's hear it for bigger lunches. Woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. You know, there are kids that are actually getting together and using their rights to speak up about that, and they got bigger lunches. You know where that happened? In Washington, D.C., where I live. The kids all got together, and they said, first of all, our lunches aren't as healthy as they should be. And they went and they testified at the city council, and they was like, we should have better lunches and everything. And so they got better lunches. Yes, dear? People should at least try sports. Yeah. And you should have sports in your schools, right? That's a good idea, too. Sports, all right. Um, what else, dear? Yes? Huh? You forgot. What else do you guys think? Yes? Um, let's see here. What would you like to change, guys? You two guys. Um, um, um. Oh, yeah. Do you guys like um, panda bears? Do you like polar bears? Yeah. Wow. Yes? For, 
for people not to kill pandas and bears that are almost extinct. I know, we have to protect those guys, right? Who here? Here's for animals. All right. Because you know what? Animals can't go to Congress, right? They can't go to the city hall. They have to have us go, yeah? I know, thank you. We should not throw trash around. And we could clean up. We can clean up trash. We can clean up, how about pollution, too? And kids are doing that right now. Wow, these kids in California, they just won a big lawsuit because they said, we should not have pollution. Yes? People should stop destroying animals' habitats. Thank you. You know what? There were some Girl Scouts. I'm going to come down here. There were some Girl Scouts, and they found out that there's something in Girl Scout cookies called palm oil. And that when you get the palm oil from the rainforest, it destroys the orangutan's home. And so the Girl Scouts, they started this whole campaign. They said, let's put something else in Girl Scouts cookies that doesn't destroy the habitat. I had to hand it to those Girl Scouts. You can check. Anybody heard of the Girl Scouts? You guys are in Girl Scouts? Check it out. The Girl Scouts campaign to save the orangutans. Yeah. Yeah, kids are doing so many good things all over the world. Um, what else do you guys think? Yes? Huh? I know, garbage and oil should not be thrown in lakes, right? Yeah. And it shouldn't be leaking in lakes either, right? I know, they should be careful with that because after you have a big oil leak, it's really hard on the animals and the people too, right? Wow. Kids are, kids are working all over the country and speaking up about these things. And that's really helping. Yeah. Yeah. No war. Thank you. Yeah, you know how they tell you guys, like, use your words? Are you supposed to be, if you guys have a disagreement, are you supposed to start bashing each other's head in? I didn't think so. So how come like we have war? We should stop having war and the adults should start, you know, using their words too, right? That's what I think. Someday we will if enough kids keep speaking up for peace. Yes? So when the passes, let's say like wars get passed I know, yeah, right. Things shouldn't cost so much. And then the poor could buy more things they need, like food and housing, and there's, what are they, you know, why should people have, some people have no home at all, they have to live with no home, right? Yeah. And people wouldn't hurt other people. Oh, yeah, here's a question. Do we need more hate in the world? No. What do we need more? Less hate. We need more what? Love. If you have a fight with somebody, did you guys ever have a fight with someone? Yeah, we all have fights, right, all the time. I mean, it happens. You have disagreements. When you have a fight, you can try to work it out and pretend like you're two countries and you're trying to talk it out and work it out without having a fight and without having war. Right? Did you guys ever have a fight with your friend? So did you figure it out? Did you work it out by talking or something? You, don't use, you can say to somebody, hey, I'm sorry I hurt your feelings, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, figure out things without... Yeah. What else? Yes. People be more what? Every job could get paid more. Yeah. People could, and a lot of people are out standing up for that. Yeah, you, a lot of kids too. The jobs should get paid more, especially some jobs that don't pay very much. Um, well, anyway, I should let you guys go back to the museum so you can discover more about Herbert Hoover. What else, sweetie? One last thing. Everyone could have a mom and dad. Would you like that? Well, I have to say, I think that w for some kids it would be nice, but like my son, he doesn't have a dad, but he's really, really happy. You know? You could be happy without a mom or dad. Do you think so? It could be. But I saw some kids, like I was a nurse. I worked in the emergency room of the Children's Hospital in um, St. Louis. And sometimes the kids would come in and they did have a mom and dad, but they were kind of unhappy. 
Because, like, maybe their mom or their dad might be kind of mean or something. And so that could be kind of not always so good either. So sometimes it's good to have a mom and dad, but sometimes it's okay without a mom and dad, right? You think so? Yeah, it could be, it could be okay, right? Do you all agree? Yeah. See what I'm saying? Like, I bet you know kids, or maybe you are too, that maybe don't have a mom and dad. It could be okay, right? Or maybe some people might even have two moms. You know anybody like that? Two dads. Yeah, it could. Have, yeah, that could be okay too, right? Uh, but aren't, you know, some people are going to disagree about these things. You see where there could be disagreement. But should we be able to talk about that in a way that's loving and respectful? Yeah, that's democracy. That's love, where maybe people don't agree, but they can at least talk about it with respect and love. Well, anyway, it's really good talking to you all today. Thank you very much, and I hope that you'll go out and speak up about a better world so that you can make it better, and I know you will. Thanks, everybody. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Oh, wait, I should get a picture of you guys. Wait a second. Hold on a second. You have a, I got my camera. Wait a second. I'm going to get one because you guys look great. And I, Yeah, I got a camera right here. But are you guys, uh, oh, here, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, you're so good. Um, oh, wow. Oh, yeah, how do you like my, it's kind of sunny in here. Wait a second. Hi. I got my sunglasses. Okay, so where are we going to get a picture here? Um, you guys want to hop up here? Oh, yeah, because you're like kids and you can hop up here. And parents, teachers, you guys want to come? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't have to think too long about that. Okay, kids, can we see the kids? Can we see you guys? All right, I guess so. Can we see you? Who wants to wear my sunglasses? Want to wear my sunglasses? Wear. Knees? Okay, good. You got it organized. You got it together. Okay. Switch together? Oh, wow. What did you think? Do kids have good ideas? I know it. Come over here, darling. I'm going to get you guys over here. Okay, you guys go down. Should, is it going to work? Should they go down on their knees? Come over here. I can't see you guys. You're not in the, in the light. In front. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is good. Come in, guys. Okay, very nice. See, kids do have great ideas. Yeah. All right. Yay. Peace. Peace. Give me a peace sign. You know what this means? This means peace. Give me a peace sign, guys, if you want. You don't have to. All right. Here's to democracy. Yeah. And kids. Kids and democracy go together. Kind of like peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. Yeah. There's Lynn. <laughs>